I don't know. I know that other companies, like drug research pharma companies, have something similar to what we do. We're a small niche within the medical library field as a whole. Most medical librarians tend to work for universities or for hospitals. There are us outliers who work for corporate, etc. But when you're looking at the field overall, you're going to find most of the jobs. And people in hospitals and universities really don't understand what we do. I do belong to the Medical Library Association, and I also have their Academy of Health Information Professionals certification, which is an extra that you have to do extra continuing education for. You have to keep up in the field yourself, in the library field. Um, you know, they have those available, but most of the people who have those don't do what I do. They, again, assist students, they assist doctors in the field, etc., rather than us doing research to then be able to give out stuff to the doctors in the field. So, uh, if you want to become a medical librarian, you probably fall into it. More medical librarians start by getting their library degree and then discover, you know, or they find a job. Oh, look, there's a job at a hospital I'm going to apply. And then they discover once they're in there, one, it's not like a public library or even a law library or a university library. You know, everybody has their own little language, their own terms, etc. And again, most people just kind of find it accidentally. In fact, there's a book out there called The Accidental Health Librarian which I've contributed to. You know, it talks about how most people in this field really do kind of stumble into it accidentally. They usually go out to be a librarian and when, you know, 75% of the people who go into the library field to start with are thinking public libraries. You know, it's only after you start doing the studies that you realize how broad the field really covers because I've even seen ads for music and wine librarians. So it's a very wide field, but there's a lot of little niches within the field, which is what the MCG library is. And I would compare us to, again, the pharma who do the research for new drugs, et cetera. They have librarians who do a lot of what we do. Help with the research, help. You know, I help our editors. They say, hey, I'm still looking for something within, you know, this particular field. Recently it was, something with one of the new uh, oncology drugs and can you help me find a little bit more so on top of whatever they've found so far or while they're still searching I'm out searching other places we not only of course go to PubMed that I mentioned but there's an excellent nursing and allied health database called CINAHL C -I -N -A -H -L, which stands for a longer term that we research all the time. We purchase CINAHL for that reason. We have another, a couple other medical databases that we purchase that we use for research, as well as some of the free ones that are out there. And again, I already mentioned people like the National Health Systems out of UK. We have a number of places in uh, Canadian databases that we search, et cetera. The editors don't have those sources. We do a lot of that for them. It tends to be accidental, but not always. There are people who know that's what they want. Medical librarian classes are not offered all the time in librarian schools. You have a set curriculum that you have to take, and then there's a lot of, the set curriculum is only like a third of what you need to get the master's. They don't always offer library classes. Look for those if you can. Also, if you're interested in the field, find the medical librarians at the university or the hospitals or, you know, I have a very good mentor at Sharp Hospital down in San Diego who, while I was in school, even though I was already working for MCG, I was still in school, still learning, and I did an internship with them for like two months, three months, something like that, once a week. She was so helpful. In fact, the whole staff at the time was very helpful in making me see how much more there was. Even though I was already working in the field without my degree, but at this point the library was growing that we had. And I had taken the medical class through the school. Having someone who 
does the day-to-day -day stuff really makes a big difference too. So if you're interested in the field, not only of course, you know, go for your library degree, go for that master's degree. Yes, a lot of people do library work without the degree, but that gives you more cachet. It's not a requirement to be a librarian per se, but it is a requirement to be an official librarian accredited through the American Library Association, etc. So, you know, there are assistant jobs out there that you don't need the research for, or the, excuse me, the degree for. But uh, that's part of what you'd have to do, and the other part is really find someone who can give you day-to-day -day tips, let you come in and observe or help or do whatever for, you know, a couple hours a week or whatever. Having someone to mentor you makes a big difference.